Hi, Smart News. Good morning. How are you doing this morning? It has been a wild night here in Texas where we experienced kind of a crazy thunderstorm. And news, when we're looking at the news for the week, one of the big news stories has been the weather. Whether you're on the West Coast or the East Coast, there's been a lot of severe weather and we're kind of moving into the winter season where this becomes a real factor. It reminded me of an article that I read earlier this week. And so what we're going to do today is just a couple of news items of like news you can use items, like really hopefully are good, strong reminders for us, not just when it comes to the headlines, but our regular life. I got a little Daniel Tiger situation over here with a two-year-old, so that's fingers crossed that everything, everything goes appropriately and he doesn't tell me to stop talking, which is his new thing. Who does that? Okay, so the Washington Post had an interesting piece about our power grid in America. And anytime that there's a storm in Texas, I'm always like, is the power going off? I'm born and raised in San Francisco. So these Southern storms are legit. They're really legit. And everybody here is like, yeah, it's a regular storm. To me, it's, it's scary. And of course, I've been through a couple pretty major power outages in my time here in Texas. What's interesting to note, according to the Washington Post, quoting government data, is that the number of power outages, the amount of power outages, or the length of power outages that we're experiencing has actually increased in the last several years. So last year, on average, the, av the average American experience eight hours without power, which doesn't seem like a lot if you've lost power for several days, but remember it's an average. And that's about double what we experienced five years ago. So the trend is higher that we're losing power more often. Now, the article was talking a lot about severe weather and how that's impacting these power outages and you have declining infrastructure and that's always a factor. Uh, and there is this, this effort, you know, one of the easy ways, quote unquote, easy ways to try to avoid power outages and storms is to bury all the power lines because depending on where you live, you know, they're either strung along the side of the road or they're buried, but it's really expensive to do so. And I don't know about you guys, but when there's something that I use every day, or I use my running shoes every day, right? I, but I run my running shoes into the ground until I can't wear them anymore, but I'll spend a lot of money on a pair of boots that I wear like once a year. Well, the same thing is happening with state and federal budgets. You know, when the power is working just fine, no one wants to spend any money on it, even though we know that it's an issue that's causing more power outages than we've experienced in recent years. So this is sort of like one of those reminders as some of you are experiencing the same sort of weather that we are in Texas. There's a tornado warning out in, or watch out in Houston. You know, we saw what happened last year in Texas with people losing power heat, electricity for several days. You know, it's a good good reminder that we need to make sure we have our flashlights and candles and everything ready to go. Sleeping bags, just in case. Just kind of a transition here. When I was looking at a different story that we have on our web website today, and this is one that I saw this morning on Iran. So we're talking about power and our ability to make sure that the lights stay on and make sure that our cars are running. You know, gasoline is so critical, right? And in Iran, they had a cyber attack yesterday. We don't know who's behind it. We don't really know all the details. The Iranian government is notoriously like not very forthcoming with information like that. But in Iran, you have a car that allows you to buy subsidized gas. And when people were trying to use that car yesterday for like more than 4,000 gas stations across the country, they were getting a cyber attack alert. So no one could get any gas. So two parts of this, when it comes to the news that you can use, it's a reminder as well that you need gas and full, full gas tank. My husband always tells me that I can't drive around with less than a half tank of gas because he's been in hurricanes before and you don't want to do that. So words to the wise, maybe a good thing to do. I want to show you this real quick. This is a great resource, Gas Buddy. And what it allows you to do is you can plug in your zip code. This is my old zip code in San Francisco. And you can actually find the cheapest gas in your area. And sometimes it's pretty significant. So like in this Exxon station, oh, this is still, this is still showing Texas. I'm gonna show you that too. But in San Francisco, check this out. So in San Francisco, at one station, gas is 4.69 per gallon and elsewhere it's 20 cents higher. So if you're in kind of the same vicinity, you'd wanna to go to the 76 station, it's the, the Shell station. This is one of my old zip codes in Texas, 78640. Let me show you what it looks like here too. I mean, gas is much lower. This has to do with a lot of different things, state regulations, how the prices are different state to state. But check this out, Exxon 279, Walmart 288. So you're seeing almost a dime a difference per gallon of gas. So this is a way for you to kind of find gas at a cheaper price if you're interested in doing that and making sure that you stay up and running. The reason why I'm curious about what's going on with Iran is because there's always a question about when the pressure, when internal pressure can cause 
uh, change when it comes to leadership. And there's this question about the the leaders of Iran have an antagonistic relationship. The U.S. has an antagonistic relationship with Iran. And there's always a question about when we'll see a change of leadership. And sometimes that change of leadership comes from within. We, the United States, are putting pressure on the government because we don't want them to be a state sponsor of terrorism. We don't want them to uh, pursue nuclear weapons, which we believe that they're doing. And so we're putting pressure on them through economic sanctions in the hope of changing, changing leadership. But change can also come from within. And Iran has really dealt with this you know, fallout of the COVID-19 pandemic. The economy is really struggling, not only because of the pandemic, but because of sanctions. Then you have something like this, a cyber attack, mm -hmm. and you start seeing a lot of discord within the public. And so when will that actually lead to change? Or if it will lead to change is always a question. This is why I want to pay close attention to this story. Again, state sponsors of terrorism, there's only a handful around the world, Iran, North Korea, Syria, and Cuba. And so this, even though the United States government often doesn't come out and directly say they want to see regime change, that's a very tricky term and word, ultimately what the United States wants to see is a different, different leadership in Iran. And so when I see something like this in cyber attack, you know, it's pressure on top of pressure and you wonder when that powder keg starts to elicit different results. So just a story that I thought you should be aware of. Okay, final thing here. I always like to give you guys something that's like, you know, news that's like hearty and good. But I saw this story and I was like, as a parent, I, I'm just so curious what you guys think about this. So everyone has school pictures, right? The New York Post has this piece about how school photos are being retouched. So let me show you what I mean. You can opt to get your kid retouched. And maybe that just means like one of their, you know, their hair is out of place or like my hair right now. And you get it kind of made that it looks more neat. But in this particular example, the retouching led to the kid's freckles being removed completely. And the mom was upset about it because she said, listen, my son has freckles and now he doesn't have any. So this has caused kind of this, this, this debate about whether or not school photos should be retouched at all and what we're actually teaching our kids. And I'm so curious what you think about this. Do you use filters on social media for your kids? I mean, some people do. I mean, some people use filters all the time. Should it be not something that we do for our kiddos? What do you guys think about that? In other news, I actually think one of the bigger questions is why do we keep taking school pictures like this? This pose is just not very, it's not good for anybody. We could do like really fun school pictures. And yet it's at as old as time that we do these headshots. <laughs> <laughs> that, like, why do we do that? We could have such fun. Look, look at the pictures that we're taking all the time with our phone. So what do you guys think about that? I'll be curious what you think about retouching and school photos. Should it not happen at all? Should it be an option? Is it something bad that we're teaching our kids? What are your thoughts? So I'll be curious in your comment section, but that's just a couple of stories I think you should know today. You know, we're seeing a, a higher pace of power outages around the country. Something just to take note of as we're moving into the winter season. We saw a major cyber attack in Iran that stopped gasoline from flowing, at least for it looks like about 24 hours. And the big question about who's behind it and, and what sort of pressure that's putting on the Iranian government. And then this sort of story that's, that's one of those makes you think, like, are we all crazy? <laughs> Should we not be doing this at all? Is it natural to do it? You know, when you look at old photos, even the old photos back at the beginning of photography, there was some retouching. What do you guys think? What do you think about this? I'll be curious your thoughts. All right, that's the news for today. That's our little coffee talk. And I hope you have a great one. More on all these stories on smarternews.com. And I'm gonna be tucking a few of them into our weekend newsletter. So if you haven't signed up for it, it's always a lot of fun to get into your inbox on Saturday morning. You just go to our website, smarternews.com, and you can put your email in. All right, guys, have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon.